So this is your pretty typical photoelectric effect question. And what you really want to know or take away from this is that when a photon of light, right, basically when a beam of light strikes the surface of a metal, if that electron, or if that photon rather has enough energy, then it's able to eject or cause the emission of an electron off the surface of a metal. Okay, so here's our metal surface. Now, you'll notice, of course, that when you're thinking about a metal, if you just hold metal in your hand, it's not randomly ejecting electrons, right? And we know that at the atomic level, if we think about the nuclei of those metal atoms, those nuclei are positively charged, right, with protons. And so they're holding the valence electrons and all the electrons in those metal atoms on pretty tightly. So it's going to take some energy in to get those protons to let go of the electrons, right? We've got to kick those electrons off using some energy. And so that's the basic idea. We can put that into an equation, which is if we think about the conservation of energy, let's start there. We know that energy in equals energy out, right? We're not going to lose any energy over the course of some physical process. And so the energy into this system is the energy of the photon, right? So I'll just say the energy of the photon. And that goes in, the energy that comes out is the kinetic energy of the electron. And we actually are given that, so that's really nice. And in addition to the kinetic energy, as we already discussed, some of that energy in is used to kick the electron off of a metal atom. Okay, that's the ionization energy of that particular metal. We can also call that psi, the work function is the technical term in the context of the photoelectric effect. So the energy we need to kick that electron off. All right, it's a simple conservation of energy. So once we've got that down, this one's pretty easy to solve with some basic substitutions from our, our basic ideas with, with light. We know, of course, that the energy of a photon, I'll go ahead and write that down here, the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of that photon. Um, they don't give us the frequency of the photon, they give us the wavelength of the photon. And we know that the speed of a photon, in the case of, of uh, you know, light, it's equal to C, 3 times 10 to the 8th, that's always equal to the frequency times the wavelength, lambda. And so with a simple substitution, we can say that the energy of a photon is also equal to HC over lambda. That's, of course, because this frequency is equal to C over lambda, and so I'll just plug that in for F there. So with that taken care of, we can figure out, based on the wavelength of the photon going in, the energy of the photon going in. So, so far we know this term, all right? Of course, we also know the kinetic energy of the electron because they tell us that this is the kinetic energy of the electron. So we've got two parts down. Now, because we know both of those, we can figure out what this work function is, but the question doesn't ask us what the energy required to kick that electron off is, it asks us what the minimum frequency of a photon going in is, right? So if I want to know the energy required to kick off an electron, remember, the energy of a photon is proportional to the frequency and the wavelength, right? So if I figure out that the minimum energy is some psi, well, that's equal to the energy of the photon, right? We'll call that E min, the minimum energy of a photon to kick off an electron. And that is also HF, right? Planck's constant times the frequency. So once we've solved for this work function term, the frequency is just going to be that work function term divided by Planck's constant. Okay, a couple of constants that you'll need to solve for this. Of course, C, the speed of light, is 3 times 10 to the positive eighth. And then H, Planck's constant, is 6.626 times 10 to the positive 34, sorry, minus 34th. All right, so take that for what you will, plug in, ends up being a nice straightforward problem for you.